Hello there! After lots of love for my tinted lip oil video recently and requests to explore other lip formulas in this corner of the beauty world, presenting part two on liquid lip balms. What's the difference? Good question. The boundaries are a bit blurred between lip oils, liquid lip balms and nourishing glosses lately. The most obvious difference is probably texture to me. I'd put liquid lip balms at the lighter end of the scale with lip oils, then comfy glosses tend to be thickest. But that's only a general rule. Some of the lip oils I shared last time actually feel thicker than these liquid balm selections or a lot thinner. So we're spoilt for choice, lots of comfortable, lightly nourishing, clear or sheer tubes mingling together. With any product that's hopefully hydrating, everyone's going to have a different experience in terms of efficacy. Might take some trial and error to find a formula that works for you, but hopefully there are a few here you might be interested to investigate. Three tinted and three clear choices, most of which you will have seen here before. I was going to buy the Westman Atelier squeaky clean liquid lip balms to compare. A few of you have asked about them, but State of Kate's comprehensive liquid lip balm review helped me save my money. She's done a massive comparison of these sorts of formulas, so I'll link that below. In much of my previous tinted balm content, you can catch red and pink, peach and orange, brownie berry edits below. I usually have a little disclaimer that I personally wouldn't reach for a tint if my lips really need repair. The colour gets messy if you're rubbing your lips together to work the product in, so I usually prefer to think of any tinted balms as sheer colour with some nice ingredients, but I'll layer a proper clear balm underneath. There are clear formulas here that I genuinely use as lip balms when my lips feel dry, so we'll meet them after the tints. Fit Glow's Lip Colour Serum was one of the first products that came to mind for this edit. The texture walks the line between lip serum, liquid lip balm and comfy gloss wonderfully. I have State of Kate to thank for introducing me to these last year. She's called them her all-time favourite lip product and they earned a spot on my 2021 makeup favourites list too. This terrific texture, so cushiony, gel-like. This is the thickest option here so it almost coats your lips without feeling heavy or sticky. Incredible incredibly smooth and balmy. Even as it wears away, my lips are left with a bit of that texture. Key ingredients, organic pomegranate sterols, vegetable collagen, and organic beet extract. Scent, tasty vanilla. Kate calls it an earthy vanilla. It's not overly sweet or artificial. It comes in about 30 shades. Root is a beautiful berry brown. This one was in my winter makeup edit last year and has good colour payoff, but Beach Glow is a stunning sheer in summer. I would have thought a shade called Sheer Shimmery Bronze Copper would work best on my eyes, not lips, but this is so flattering, not overly glittery on, it just looks shiny. The Rare Beauty Stay Vulnerable Glossy Lip Balms appeared in my overview of the Stay Vulnerable collection last year. They're meant to be like a lip mask in a gloss, hugging your lips, visibly plumping with high shine and a lasting non-sticky feel. Let's work through that. Lovely, comfy, balmy texture. Not as thick as Fit Glow, but there's still a gel-like, almost filmy feel. To me, this sits between Fit Glow and Rowan coming up. Definitely doesn't last all day on me though, although I don't think any lip product ever does. Quite a few formulas in this video use plumping as a descriptor, but there's no true plumping, tingling or burning. They just gloss over fine lines to make your lips look slightly fuller. I wouldn't say these are super shiny either, more of a soft, hydrated, balmy glow. Key ingredients, a botanical blend of lotus, gardenia and white water lily. Scent, no obvious fragrance or flavour, just a subtle cosmetic scent. Nearly neutral is my favourite, a neutral pink that goes on as more of a soft, chocolatey hint of tint on me. And nearly apricot is called a soft coral, a sheer, summery, peachy pink. The Rowan Kiss My Liquid Lip Balms are well recognised in this part of the industry, a perfect follow on from Fit Glow and Rare because these are the thinnest of the trio. Not thin by any means because that gel-like cushiony feel is still there when you rub your lips together, but they have all of those great characteristics with a lighter, balmier consistency. Fantastic pick if you're particularly picky about non-sticky shine. Key ingredients, mango, grapeseed, avocado and coconut oils, scent, Peppermint, refreshing. Minor cooling feel on the lips for me, but no tingling. Charlie is described as dusty rose, and with my natural lip colour, it's a great my lips but better look. Barely there, sheer rosy boost. Scout looks like blackberry in the tube, but has more of a deep purpley berry quality. I do spot some separation near the inside of my lips, but if you have a deeper natural lip colour and this is a just bitten sort of tint on you, wouldn't be noticeable. 
On to the clear options. By Terry's Bomb de Rose Liquid Lip Balm is one of my holy grail products, a 2019, 2020 and 2021 favourite. And when I was working with the brand in the past and picked my top 10 By Terry products, this was number three. It's one of my top glossy lip products, full stop, of all time, because it's truly a liquid lip balm, a liquid version of the brand's iconic Bomb de Rose Balm Pot. The same luxurious, nourishing feel, just a little more lightweight, not sticky whatsoever, with more shine and an easier doe foot applicator. For that reason, I finished more tubes of this than any other gloss in my entire life, and I keep a mini in my bag. There's a soft, creamy, light pink tint to this, but it's clear once you work it in. Key ingredients, rose blossom essential wax, shea butter, vitamin E, ceramides and hyaluronic acid microspheres, scent, rose, heaven. Another Fit Glow Lip Serum for you, but instead of the lip colour serums, this is the Night Serum, a completely clear version suggested for use at night, but I break the rules and wear this during the day all the time. Why wouldn't you? It's everything I love about the Fit Glow formula in a colourless format to wear alone at your desk to enjoy that comfy feel, layer over matte lipsticks to increase the comfort, or slick over lip liners to soften the colour. In fact, I like it so much as a clear, comfy gloss, I've actually never tested it as an overnight lip treatment. I have other balms I love in that area, so please let me know if you've tried it as a true evening step. Key ingredients, plant ceramides like last time, organic pomegranate plant sterols, beet extract and vegan collagen, scent, same tasty natural vanilla. Finishing with the Dior Lip Maximizer Serum, which isn't quite a liquid lip balm, but it's a product that's intrigued me lately and isn't too far removed from this sort of formula gathering either. Less makeup, more skincare. This serum joined Dior's famous Lip Maximizer glosses earlier in the year, but unlike those glosses and everything else here, this isn't shiny. It's more of a satin finish, looks milky and white when it first goes on, and feels smooth with a tiny bit of grip too. It's actually called an emulsion, which in the skincare world is thinner than creams and lotions, but thicker than serums. I think that's where some slight tackiness comes from here. It's actually meant for layering hydration hydration. Like a skincare serum that comes before heavier moisturiser, this feels best when you add another balm, liquid or gloss on top, or you could use it to prep your lips before colour. No true plumping effect, despite being called a lip plumping serum, it just softens fine lines for smoother looking lips and there's a subtle minty cooling sensation. Key ingredients, mallow flower extract and hyaluronic acid, scent Dior's usual peppermint meets vanilla, but this scent also filled me with nostalgia because it reminded me of the Clarins Natural Lip Perfector. Haven't used them in years, but let me know if you have both at home to compare. That's it for this liquid lip balm exploration. Have you tried any of these formulas? What are your favourite shades or do you stick to clear tubes? Are you more of a lip oil or liquid balm person? Let me know which subcategory you'd be curious to see next. Comfortable glosses are coming up on my list. Thanks for watching. See you next time.